Hello everyone! It is super convenient to be able to do a little bit of scripting on the computer. So, uh, today we're going to spend like five minutes just dipping your toe in and doing some basic stuff with Python. And then at the end of the five minutes, we'll redo together what we did in class. So you'll create a root finder using a simple iterative algorithm. And then the last problem in your homework is a bonus one where you can actually create Newton's method using Python. Um, all right, cool, let's do it. So go ahead and go to uh, REPL it and start coding. We will be using Python. If you are already a programmer in another language, you can feel free to implement these uh, algorithms in another language. So here's the idea. You're going to type your program in here and click the Run button to run it there. So let's start with basic displaying things. So the print statement will let you display stuff. Hello world is the classic first program you run because it's the simplest thing to run. So the print statement displays anything inside quotes counts as text and whatever you're printing has to be inside open and closing parentheses like that. So go ahead and give that a try. You can print stuff in addition to text. You could print the result of a mathematical operation. So three plus uh, two to the power of eight. And remember I said the star star operator is how you do exponentiation in Python. So this should, sorry, two to the power of three, so that gives us eight. So this should display 11, and it does. Um, let's go ahead and create some variables. So one way you can create variables is um, you could say like x equals five, or four for example, y equals eight. And then you could say z equals two times x well, so look, you might be tempted to do this, 2x plus 2y, because that's how you write it down mathematically. I wonder, does that work in Python? Probably not. Yeah, so look, this is what happens when you get an error. You click run, and it will tell you what the problem is, and it will tell you the line it happens on. So it's saying line 4, invalid syntax. So it doesn't recognize this as multiplication. So if you want to multiply, you really need to have an asterisk. So when I run it, um, it evaluates these things one at a time. I said in English, uh, in inside class, uh, the equal sign means take whatever's on the right, evaluate it, and then save it inside the variable on the left. So you cannot say this, for example. Um, mathematically, this would be the same thing because you're asserting that those things are the same. But in Python, you can't take this and then save it inside of four because four isn't the kind of thing that can save a number. All right, so, so far so good. So you can create variables, you can use them in mathematical expressions, you can display them. Um, so why don't you go ahead and, and tinker around a little bit, make a couple of new equations. Well, let's, let's do like the distance formula, that's good. So if you want a square root, you might be wondering how do you do that. So let's import the math library. <clears throat> let's make a new variable d, which is math.sqrt for square root x times x plus y times y. So that's x squared plus y squared. Oh, and it's now it's complaining because z isn't defined. So let's display d. There we go. So let's go ahead and define some of our own functions. <clears throat> so at the top, to define a function, you'll say def. Then you give the function a name. So I'm going to call this function hyp for hypotenuse. And it's going to take two inputs, an x and a y. So then whatever I type after return, this is going to be the output from my function. So I'm going to do math.square root x squared plus y squared. Let's, let's do it the other way. So this is x squared plus y squared. And now let's just make sure it works. So we're going to print, let's print one we know. So we know that the hypotenuse of a 3, 4 triangle should, excuse me, should be 5. And we run it, and it is 5. So just to be clear, what's happening here is hype, that's the name of our function. It takes two inputs, 3 and 4. So the 3 gets copied as x. The 4 gets copied as y. It evaluates this expression here. So it will take the x, which is 3, and square it. It will take the y, which is 4, and square it, add them together, take the square root, then return that as the answer, and when it returns that as the answer, that's what gets printed out. So let's define another equation now. Um, let's do, let's call this one f of x. And it's okay to use the same x variable name here. Um, 
this x is like a local variable that's only defined for the purpose of this function. So just like you can have f of x and g of x in math and that there's no confusion about x, same thing here. All right, so let's return, let's do the one we did in class. So, uh, well, let's do one similar to class. So three to the power of x minus two times x. Okay, and make sure you can evaluate both functions. So let's do f of three and see what that returns. Great, so that's printed 21. <clears throat> okay, let's practice using uh, a nicer print statement and then a loop. So inside your print statement, let's put quotes and let's do, let's do this, input and then have an opening and closing curly brace. You get the curly braces by pressing shift and doing the square brackets and then output another couple curly braces dot format and you need an opening and closing parenthesis and then you can give it two numbers like two and three and if you remember from class it'll take two and substitute it in here it'll take three and substitute it in there so when I run it it says now input two, output three because these two numbers got substituted but what we'd really want to do is have two be the input and have the output be the results of running f of two so let's do that instead Okay, so that looks much better. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and create a loop. So you can type for num in range. Let's do one to 10. And then you need a colon. And it's automatically going to indent for you here. You wanna keep that indentation. <clears throat> and for the moment, let's just do this. Let's type print num. So now when we run it, you see it starts at one and it goes all the way up to nine. Um, that's what's happening with these two lines of code. So this is running in a loop and this variable num starts at one and then two and then three all the way up to, but not including 10. So if I change this to 103, for example, and then I run it, now we've got the printing going all the way up to 102. Okay, so let's, uh, Let's delete that print statement and bring this on the inside. And let's make it again, one to 10. So now instead of substituting in two and f of two, let's substitute in num and f of num. And now when I run it, we got this nice data table where num is ranging from one to 10, as we see. And then we're getting the output of running it through the function that we defined and we can see them all there. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and re-implement the root finding algorithm that we did in class. So I'm gonna delete this hypotenuse command. I'm gonna keep the f function. Um, I'm gonna delete this also. So if you remembered, um, you want a left guess and a right guess. Um, if you wanna call them left and right, you can do that if that makes more sense to you. I'm gonna call them, I'm gonna call them a and b and mid. So if you wanna, you can have a hash sign and that's a comment. So A is left guess, B is right guess. So a comment is something the computer ignores. It's just like a little note for yourself. So let's make A equal to one. Let's make B equal to six. Let's go back to the Desmos graph that we had. So, so let's make our F function two to the X minus three X. So it's gonna be two to the X minus three X. Okay. And let's say we're trying to find this root here. So I'm gonna make my initial guess zero, sorry, my left guess zero and my right guess one. So my left guess will be zero, my right guess will be one. Okay, so the steps that we wanna do are, let's calculate the midpoint, which is gonna be a plus b divided by two. <clears throat> now we wanna calculate the value at the midpoint so, so the output of the function at the midpoint. So midval will be f of mid. So we'll take that midpoint, we'll evaluate it through the f function, save the answer. And now we wanted to do something like this. Remember, we wanted to say, so here's the point, let's pretend we can't see our function. So here's a point at zero and a point at one. We know our function is continuous, so by the intermediate value theorem, we know that it has to cross the x-axis somewhere in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the value at the midpoint, 
so 0 0.5 f of 0 0.5 and it looks like that's just a little bit a little bit under the x-axis so what that tells us is that the root must be between 0 and 1 half and the way that we figured that out is we checked to see is this midpoint value on the same side of the x-axis as a or is it on the same side of the x-axis as B that's what we care about because if it's on the same side of the axis as B then we want to know then we want to do the whole thing again only our right hand guess B is going to be replaced by what this mid value is so it's like we're moving our right hand guess to what the mid value was so that's what I want to test for I want to ask if and you want to use parentheses here. So I'm going to say if the mid value, maybe it, maybe it doesn't even make sense to save the mid value. Yeah, let's just, let's just evaluate it on the fly. So if f of the midpoint is bigger than zero, and you can just type the word and, which is the logical and. So if f mid is greater than zero, and f of a is greater than zero, that means that they're both greater than zero, which must mean that the root is between the midpoint and B. So in that case, we would want the new A guess to be the midpoint. So otherwise, elif, this is an expression that means if this if statement wasn't true, then let's do another one. So if this isn't true, let's see if f mid is smaller than zero and also f of a is smaller than zero. Because if they're both smaller than zero, then that also means we want to make our left hand guess be the old midpoint. Otherwise, we want to make the right hand guess be the midpoint. So things to look out for, make sure that you've got colons here and make sure that these things are tabbed, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, let's just run it real quick and see if there are any errors. OK, great. So this seems like it's running just fine. So what we want to do now is run this whole thing in a loop, <coughs> starting here. So we have our initial guesses. And then inside a loop, we'll calculate the midpoint. We'll figure out where the root is, which side. And then we'll adjust our left and our right hand guesses depending on which side we think it's on. So let's say for num in range 1 to 10 to keep it small and have a colon and then you're going to need to add one tab to every single line so far because the tab is what says like what what are the lines of code that you want to be looping so we want to loop all these okay it would probably be nice to have a print statement in here so let's go ahead and print let's print the left guess and let's print the right guess. So then dot format. And then we're going to print A and B for our left and right guesses. OK, another thing to be careful for is all of your parentheses need to be in matching pairs. So if you accidentally like leave a parenthesis out like this, so here this one matches this one, but this one doesn't have any match, um, it will probably tell you. Right, so invalid syntax that's not terribly specific, but at least it told you what line it was happening on. Oh, it didn't. It guessed wrong. So that's another thing to know. Sometimes Python doesn't know what you're trying to do. Okay, so there we go. Print statement is going. So now we're running, and it looks like we're zeroing in on 0.45-ish. So going back to Desmos, let's look at the graph. And it looks like 0.4578. So let's go back here, and instead of doing range 1 to 10, let's do range 1 to 100. And now we're getting a left and a right hand range that are quite close to each other. So congratulations. If you have done this, you have successfully implemented a simple root finding algorithm. As the year goes on, there's some other things which are going to be very convenient if you can do a little bit of Python programming. So it's good to just practice this a little bit and see that it's not too scary. Um, because if you know how to program things in Python, you don't have to do it by hand, which is terrible to do by hand, I mean. 
Um, and you can also actually do stuff with real live data. You can get a file that contains thousands of data points and you can have your computer run some calculations on all the data points at once, which is what you would actually want to do if you were using this stuff. Okay, good luck.